Welcome to the 20th lecture on calculus. Today we will discuss the relation between limits and algebraic operations of functions. So in lecture 5 we have discussed the relation between limits and algebraic operations of sequences of real numbers. Using those results today we will see the relations between limits and algebraic operations of functions. So let me first recall the definition of a limit of a function. So you consider a function f from d to r where this d we call it domain of f this, this is a subset of the set of real numbers r and you consider a point c and it should satisfy certain condition that your domain d that should contain a deleted r neighborhood of c for some r positive real number r. So in other words d contains an open interval like this c minus r comma c plus r around c except possibly this point c itself. So the domain of this function it contains this open interval except possibly this point c. Here d may or may not contain the point c and in this case we can talk about the limit of this function f at the point c and what is the definition? So with the above hypothesis for a real number l the following are equivalent first condition is saying that for every sequence x suffix n in this set so all the terms of this sequence are points of d and no term of this sequence is equal to c so for every sequence x suffix n in this set if xn converges to c then f of xn that should converge to l so that is condition one and second condition is it says that for every positive real number epsilon there exists a positive real number delta such that for all points of t which lie in this deleted delta neighborhood the function value f of x it should lie in the epsilon neighborhood of l. We have proved in the previous lecture that these two conditions are equivalent and the function f has a limit l at c if it satisfies one of these equivalent conditions. And in this case we write f of x tends to l as this point x tends to c and we also denote in this way limit x tends to c f of x that is same as l. And today we will see the relation between uh, limits and algebraic operations of functions. So you consider two functions f and g from d to r and c is a point and such that limit of f of x and g of x exist at this point c and suppose limit of f of x at x equal to c is l and limit of g of x at x equal to c is m then this theorem says that limit of f plus g this function it exists at the point x equal to c and this limit it is same as l plus m and similarly limit of f minus g exists at the point c and it is l minus m and this is limit of r times f this function at the point x equal to c it also exists this limit and it is same as r times l so r times the limit of f at x equal to c where r is any real number and limit of this product it exists at x equal to c and it is same as l times m and limit of this division f by g it exists provided limit of g of x at x equal to c is non-zero. So we need this condition for division and limit of this thing it is just l by m. So you consider a sequence in this set d minus c which converges to c then you can use the results uh, from lecture 5. So since limit of f of x is l so from here f of xn it should converge to l and g of xn it should converge to m. Then the sum f of xn plus g of xn it should converge to l plus m. And similarly this f of xn minus g of xn it tends to l minus m and r times f of xn it is same as r times f of xn it converges to r times l and similarly this product it is same as this product of these two sequences and this product it converges to l times m and for division this is same as f of xn by g of xn it converges to l uh, by m provided this m is non-zero. 
So here is this proposition. You consider this function g from d to r and c is some point. So suppose this limit of g of x at x equal to c it is m that is some non-zero real number. Then there exists delta such that this function value it is non-zero for all x belongs to this domain d and this deleted delta neighborhood. So let's prove this proposition. So we use epsilon delta definition to prove this fact. So you consider a particular epsilon. So in this case since m is non-zero we just consider epsilon that is absolute value of m by 2 this is some a positive real number. So if m is the limit then it satisfies epsilon delta condition and what is that? That for every epsilon there exists delta which satisfies certain condition. Okay. So in this case we are considering this particular epsilon and for this particular epsilon there exists delta such that for all points belongs to D and this deleted delta neighborhood this function value g of x it belongs to epsilon neighborhood of m. So from here we will get that this absolute value so this thing it is less than or equal to this absolute value and this absolute value is less than this thing. So and then from here we will get that this absolute value of g of x it is absolute value of m minus this thing that is just this one and it is less than or equal to this absolute value plus this thing. So it is 3 times absolute value of m by 2. So in this range this function value it is lying in this range. So uh, in particular we are getting that for all points of d and this deleted delta neighborhood this function value because this thing is some positive real number since m is non-zero. And here are some examples. So uh, using those relations between limits and algebraic operations we can see that this polynomial function uh, limit exists for this polynomial function at every point. Okay. So you consider a function from this set of real numbers to itself this, this is given by this polynomial. So this is a polynomial over uh, the set of real numbers. Uh, what I mean that x is just variable and these coefficients these are real numbers okay and this function value f of x it is given by this this thing okay then for every point c the limit extends to c of f of x it exists and it is same as uh, this this value so it is evaluated uh, at x equal to c okay how to get this thing so it can be proved easily that limit extends to c of x. So if you just consider g of x, it is x. One can prove that limit exists at every point. So limit extends to c of this function, it is just c. And if you consider ai, so you consider this function, it is for all x. So this is constant function. So every, every point x, it is mapping to this constant thing, a suffix i. Okay. So if you cons consider this constant function then also one can prove that a limit exists and limit at x equal to c of this constant function it is given by that thing. Okay. So then one can so using these two limits and now one can use the relations between limits and algebraic operations. So we know the relations between limits and uh, addition, subtraction, product all right. So one can use it here. So if you apply, so if you if you apply those relations between limits and algebraic operations, uh, you will get that limit of this thing. It is just this one, because for example, this x square plus 2x plus let's say one, one can think it it is product of these two functions plus uh, it is two times x. Two is uh, this constant function and this is. That, that, that function g of x equal to x and then again you have this constant function. So it is just combination of uh, summation and product of functions. So using the relations between limits and algebraic operations one can get this one. Okay. And then example 2 it says that you again you consider uh, two functions given by two polynomials. Okay. So, we, so such function we call it polynomial functions. Okay. So you consider two polynomial functions and suppose c is a point and suppose 
g of c that is non zero so if you evaluate this uh, polynomial at x equal to c then uh, that is non zero or in other, in other words c is not a root of this polynomial okay so then limit extends to c of f of x by g of x this thing it exists and it is same as f of c by g of c so to prove this thing you can use example 1 so example 1 it says that limit of f of x it is f of c and limit of g of x it is g of c and since g of c is non zero so it is it is yeah so you have this condition and then you use the relation between limits and division okay so you will ultimately you will get this one and this is our last reason so it says that if limit exists for a function then limit exists for the function given by this absolute value okay so you consider a function f from d to r and suppose this limit exists and it is l then this theorem it says that limit at x equal to c it exists for this function and and limit that will be same as absolute value of l okay so how to prove that again we will use uh, the facts for sequences of real numbers okay so you consider a sequence in this set which converges to c we just need to prove that this sequence it converges to uh, this mod l okay so since l is the limit of f of x and xn converges to c then f of xn it converges to l and then using lecture 5 so we have proved that if a sequence converges to l then this sequence its absolute value it converges to mod l so you have this limit and then using the definition of limit in terms of sequences of real numbers you can have that this limit it exists and it is same as this absolute value okay and that's all i'll